Hey, salam alaikum. Welcome back to the parenting series. Inshallah, we're going to get started. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Wassalatu wassalamu ala Rasulullah. Today we're going to talk about the four types of parenting styles. Okay, so up until now, before I get into this, up until now, we've talked about how important it is to, um, to work on yourself, right, as an individual, to work on your marriage, on how to have a very um, a loving, harmonious relationship at home. Because no matter how much you try to raise good kids, if you have a hostile environment at home, if there is tension, there's fighting, there's issues, those definitely need to be addressed. And if you yourself are not emotionally balanced, if you yourself are not able to uh, handle the difficulties of life, the ups and downs, if you're not reacting in the right way, guess what? Your kids are going to have the same kind of reactions they're going to learn. So first of all, we always have to work on ourselves and on our relationship prior to even thinking of the parenting. Salam alaikum. Uh, so now it's, um, you know, they've done a lot of research on how the, you know, the emotional intelligence is even more important than IQ. A lot of times, and I think in, in our countries, all the emphasis is on academics, right? We want our kids to be smart. We want them to get A's. We want them to become doctors. It's all about get the grade, do the work, and you feel like that is making them successful. But now the new research, there's a lot of uh, a lot of research done by especially like the Gottmans that it is about your emotional intelligence, right? So you can have someone with a very high IQ and they're antisocial, right? They will be in a, you know, they can be a CEO of a company and they don't know how to deal with their coworkers. They don't know how to resolve conflict. They don't handle criticism. They are not able to. Um, they're not able to resolve issues as they come up, and those are the individuals. They're getting fired. They're getting bad reports, and they have problems in their marital relationship. They have problems with every relationship, right? So there's now a move towards improving the emotional intelligence, making sure that our kids are learning how to deal with the ups and downs of life because that's what's going to determine who is successful and who is not. So your IQ could be average. You could have an average you know, GPA, but yet be much more successful than these individuals who are like scoring perfect uh, scores on their SAT and have like 4.0 averages because they know how to interact with people. They know how to um, resolve their issues. And this is what actually when now in the job applications, when you're applying for a job, they're not only just looking at your aptitude, but they are testing, they're doing personality tests to see who's going to be the one who um, can get along with others well, who is the one who has the ability to ease through any kind of difficulties. Because it's very easy to be happy and content right? When everything goes your way, when everyone listens to you. This is what I was trying to teach my daughter as I, as I teach her. Um, you know, it was the night after the uh, after our Eid, right? And she's so happy and she's kissing me and she's like so content. I go, you know, I'm so happy that you're content. I'm so happy. Um, <clears throat> but it's easy to be happy and content when you know you got pretty much everything you wanted we had a beautiful day <laughs> you got the gift you wanted you got the outfit you wanted all of that the test is being able to be happy when things don't go your way when you didn't get that that you didn't get the you know the gifts you wanted maybe someone you didn't end up going to the place that you were hoping to go to then if you can be happy and grateful and kiss your mom and say thank you <laughs> that will be that will be amazing so that's what i'm striving for <laughs> and and we have to remind ourselves because also we might have these kind of expectations that we feel if 
You know, if my husband does everything that I say, if my kids listen to me, if there's no disturbance, if there's no mess in the house, if this, 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 and this, then I'm going to be a pleasant, charming lady. But if not, beware. <laughs> you know, be aware because then it's not going to be pretty. And I think um, that's what we're trying to teach our kids from early on because unfortunately, I think most of us have not had that kind of training. Most of us have not had parents who handled difficulties with ease, who knew how to uh, navigate through all of the stormy waters. You see people losing it. You see people uh, yelling and screaming and, and, and being judgmental. I actually, I had a client who um, has a very important position in their company and she said, you know, it's really hard um, because it's very hard for me to teach other people. And it really, when, when I'm teaching them, I feel that they're really stupid. <laughs> and I think, you're so stupid. How can you not understand it? I'm like, and so sometimes they write, you know, they have to give a report and uh, a kind of an analysis of the person. And they, they say some people will write that, oh, she made us feel stupid. Right? And these kind of things are not good, right? If we don't, if we're not able to give this message, if we're not able to um, share in a positive light, then we're not going to be effective. Okay? So, all of this that I'm telling you is not just for the parenting, it's, it's about how we deal with everyone, right? So, this emotional intelligence is what we're going to be focusing on inshallah no problem now Allah says in the Quran in Surah Mulk ayah number 2 it is he who created death and life to to test you right to test you to see what to see which one of you is the best, right? And he is exalted and most forgiving. So all of this, all that we are going through is a test. This is Surat Mulk, Surat Mulk, Ayah number two, okay? And so all that we're going through in our parenting, all that you're going through, and, I, and our focus is parenting, right? All that you're being faced with is a test, right? It is a test to see Who's going to be the best? Now, if there was a cook-off and you have to prepare your best, what, biryani, <laughs> right? How enthusiastic are you going to be to get, you know, your grandma's recipe and you're going to, like, make the best effort so you're going to be named you know, biryani queen, right? <laughs> the biryani queen. And for the Arabs out there, you know, if you have, who's, who makes the best warana, right? The grape leaves. And people will just put so much time and effort and energy because they want to be the best. It is very natural, assalamu alaikum, it's very natural for us to want to excel, to want to be the best. I remember um, in my kids' school, they had sports day. And it's on sports day, they uh, included the, the parents as well. And I remember us as moms, we became so competitive. You know, I myself, like we were doing ping pong. So I was like, ooh, <laughs> getting really into it. And I was like all excited being named, you know, as the uh, ping pong champion. Yeah, and it's just, you know, silly things that we get either we feel proud about it or we're excited about it and we exert our effort. Now, imagine... This is such a huge test, right? And this, to see who's the best, is so much more important than any cook-off, than any athletic competition. This is seeing, like, who's going to be the best parent? Who is going to be exalted by Allah, right? And then what's the end result? The end result is not just some certificate. It's not some, you know cheap metal, right? It's not just having your name written down in the newsletter. It's about a status that will give you this like, this continuous charity, right? 
we get a continuous charity when we invest our time, our effort, our energy into our kids. It is a, it is the ultimate sadaqa jariya, and that's why so many, so many moms and so many dads dedicate their time and attention. So many moms give up going and building a career and doing so many things because they want to focus their time and attention and this is this is really an ultimate sacrifice and it's and it's a wonderful thing and as my kids were growing up it was definitely alhamdulillah priority it was always they were by my center of attention and anytime i was doing anything it was always revolved around their nap time after they slept and when you do that you see the results later on you know when people are struggling with in the teenage years right you ask what was going on during the childhood right i had i was giving a lecture once and one lady came up to me and she's like she's just crying and she's like my my daughter is you know disrespectful she is rude to me she um talks back she does all these terrible things and you know she she just she wanted sympathy but i had to ask a very critical question it's like what was, what were you doing with her when she was about five or six it's like i didn't have time for her Anytime she came up to me, anytime she wanted my attention, I didn't have time for you, you know. And when when a person is consistently neglected, consist, consistently told, you're not important, I don't have time for you, you know, stay away, get away, leave me alone, you're driving me nuts, you're, uh, you know, you're, you're the cause of my problems, guess what's going to happen as they get older? as they get older then that's gonna that's gonna build up and they're gonna be full of resentment and they're gonna like tear away right and so um when we make this kind of investment first of all for those of you um you know who are tuning in i'm sure most of you are the stay-at-home moms and i just want to say that i know it's the toughest job it is so hard there are times that you'll just break down and cry because it's overwhelming. There are times when you feel like, you know, my God, how can I, how can I carry on? You have the, the struggle of keeping the house together, you know, taking care of the kids. And, and it's, you know, it really builds up. So first of all, I want to honor all of you who are doing that and, and know that it's a long-term investment. You know when you put in your money and they say, you know, this is this is one of those long-term, you're not going to get rich quick. Right? <laughs> if you put it in and you're patient and you put that money and then like after 30, 40 years, then you have built like wealth, real wealth, right? And it's it's not risky because you know there's like this guarantee, inshallah. And so when you are investing that time, the effort, the energy, the patience, all this that you're, the fact that you want to even learn about being a good parent sets you apart from the 99.9% .9 of the people. Because a lot of people have this feeling that, oh, I, 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 I already know this. I don't need to learn. I remember someone had recently, um, uh, you know, she was pregnant. And I, and I, with a lot of enthusiasm, because I know when I was pregnant, I was reading every book that I could get a hold of. I, would, I attended like eight classes just to know how to take care of my baby, because I didn't want to just rely on my mom. A lot of times, you know, you have a baby and you're like, mom, <laughs> here. And then, you, you know, you feel inadequate or you feel incompetent. I didn't, I wanted to be competent. And, um, so I went to this sister and I said, would you like me to recommend, you know, some books for you to read? She said, no, no, no. I already know this stuff. I'm like, oh, wow. <laughs> wow. You know, for someone to just refuse to want to learn new material, that, that means, you know, we're not, we don't have that motivation. But the fact that you're taking the effort, I think it's, it's wonderful, mashallah. So we're being tested and we're going to see how we can pass this test. I'm going to talk to you about the four different kinds of parenting styles. The first one is the dismissing parent. Okay. And this is based on, like, like I said, the research done by the Gottmans on, like, in, on emotional, um, emotionally healthy kids. And dismissive parents, this is when they treat their kids as being um they're unimportant okay they feel that you know whatever you're feeling is 
is trivial. They, um, they kind of ignore if the child is asking for their attention, if they're um, trying to talk to them. And they just kind of dismiss them. I don't have time. And I think a lot of maybe the generation our parents are from, I think they a lot of a lot of the parents fall into this category, right? That kids are a side issue and, and not so important issue, right? We don't the kids are to be seen, not heard. That it's kind of that mentality, right? And um, and then they want to see negative emotions disappear quickly. You have you have a uh, you're sad, you're crying, you're angry. Suck it up, right? Get over it. Not and there's no direction about how, right? Because um, I remember there were some uh, there was these shows. I used to love watching Oprah because it was all about self improvement, making changes in yourself, and um, and there was one episode where a lot was being discussed about that kind of like gaining gaining control over yourself and how you react. And this one one uh, lady just looked up with such, you know, big confused eyes with like, how, right? That's the big question. How do you do it? Because everyone can talk theories. It's so easy. And I remember before having kids, I would do parenting classes and I had a totally different outlook, right? <laughs> I would give, I would do that because it was from what I learned in the books, right? I didn't have, I didn't have the kids. I didn't have the struggles. And there were moms in the audience who had two, three kids. Some of them were like, you know, um, in their teenage years, some of them were had sibling rivalry. I couldn't relate to any of that because I hadn't experienced it. And that, that goes a lot into it's so important to have the experience to to go through these issues not just in the books you can't just read a book and then t start talking about it you have to live it you have to experience the struggles to be able to relate and then I changed so much about my style and my technique because I then I could really relate to the moms who were you know who were struggling so the dismissive parent um, they see their child emotion as a demand to fix things. So when the child is uh, crying or getting angry, they just feel like they're being demanding and they just want to shut them down, right? It's like, just stop the crying, stop the anger. And they, they just feel that with time, it, things should get better, right? <clears throat> and they minimize the child's feeling and they downplay any event that occurs. So that's that's their outlook. And there is no problem solving. There is not like, okay, I understand you're feeling angry because you didn't get to go to your friends, but let me tell you and let me explain why this happened. And there's no validation, right? It's just about time will make you feel better. Okay, with enough time, you're going to forget and things are going to be okay. So how many of you experience that kind of parenting? Seriously. You're not on video. Okay. <laughs> almost everybody, almost everybody here had that dismissive, be quiet, don't talk, don't show emotion, go sit down, be quiet, and be obedient, right? So that's the now what is what is the effect of the style? Okay, now you're gonna you're gonna understand a lot about yourself, right? Because this is how you know how you were uh, raised, right? So they learn that their feelings are wrong. So it's wrong to have feelings, it's inappropriate, it's not valid, right? I remember when I was doing, um, you know, I was doing my uh, master's program and in the master's program it was all about how to express yourself. I think we've gone through, you know, like express your emotions without it being an attack. So. I tried it out with my dad because my family were the first people <laughs> I tried it out with. So I would tell my dad, I feel, you know, I made an I statement, I didn't make an attack that you never do. This. I said, I feel like, let's say, um, sad when you don't spend time with me. I was like, you're wrong to feel that way. I said, you're not supposed to say that. My instructor said that your feelings will never be questioned and it won't be invalidated. You're not following the script, Dad. <laughs> so it would be so funny because 
That was their mentality. No, no, no. If you feel this way, you're wrong. Okay, I didn't, I didn't want you to feel sad, so you must be wrong. So this kind, then, so you're constantly then feeling that there's something wrong with the emotions that you're having. That's why people have such a hard time when they get married, discussing problems, trying to resolve it, because they were never made to feel that their emotions are valid. So this is, this is what happened. So they, and then also they're going to have problems regulating their own emotions because they, they just weren't taught. It was basically be quiet, stop crying. But how, how do I stop crying when like my heart is broken because I didn't make the team? How do I stop crying when let's say the, the engagement has been called off and I, I'm devastated? How do I stop crying when my best friend has like started a rumor about me, right? It's just, it's just like, I don't want to hear it. It's basically that what the parents are saying. Now, then there, so that was what kind of parenting? Dismissing. They're, they're the dismissing. They just dismiss whatever you're saying. The second is the disapproving, okay? Disapproving parent. And this, it actually has a lot of the same behavior as the dismissing parents, some of the same behaviors, but it's much more negative. It's much more negative. So here we have, they're disapproving. So it's full of judgment, criticism. There is, um, now many of you may say, no, 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 my parents were this, <laughs> right? Um, so they criticize the emotional expression. So if your child is, um, is yelling or screaming, you're just like, oh, you're so, you know, you're, you're so out of control. You, uh, you're driving me nuts. What's wrong with you? Get it together. So it's more of, it's all criticism, right? And emphasize it. It's, and it all is about conformity to good behavior, right? It's about when someone says, and you know, with the, with the uh, Arab saying, hey, this is a, hey, this is very bad, be good, right? And this is where the whole people pleasing, I mean, I know I was a people pleaser because the, everything was about what the people say. Dress nice for the people, get good grades for the people. Everything was about the people, right? And then it took a lot. I think it was uh, basically my first few years in college where, as I started learning about Islam and trying to implement it, where I thought, you really have to do away with the people, right? When your, your whole focus is about pleasing the people, then, you know, where does Allah fit into the equation? We really have to replace what people think with what Allah thinks, right? Um, I had one client who says, I'm always going around thinking, what will my mom think? And her mom, unfortunately, is a is a negative influence in her life. Her mom doesn't have good relationship, doesn't give good advice. So it's actually, it's not someone that she could rely on for, for advice. And so I said, why, in those situations, why not ask, what will Allah think of me, right? What would Allah want me to do when I am uh, about to get into a fight with, it's okay. <laughs> with, if I'm about to get into a fight with my spouse, what will my, what would Allah want me to do when I'm about to lose it and I'm about to um, get angry at, from my kids, right? How would, you, how would things change if you replace the people or my mom or my husband with, what will Allah think? How will that change things you think? It's just a little loud, if you don't mind. Are if are you hot? The air conditioning wasn't on, so not that kicked in. So. Oh, it kicked in. Okay, yeah. good. Thank you. Having fan yeah. issues. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, um, how do you think that would change things around when you have your whole focus is about pleasing Allah? How will that affect your relationships? What do you think? Yeah, I think it's how? Right. So your anger will subside because you're no longer just thinking about people. You're thinking, like, oh my God, like this is, this is my status with Allah, right? Because the people, first of all, they may have really different morals, right? They may, they may be unethical themselves. So who cares what they think? And, and then you run after people. And this is the example I gave her. I go, how hard have you tried? 
how hard have you tried to please your mom? Has it been successful? She's like, she's never satisfied, right? You may work so hard to please your spouse, so hard to please your parents, but they're never content. It's never enough. But when you do it with that intention of, I want to please Allah, what happens? I want to please Allah. And you know that every little effort is rewarded. Every little thing is acknowledged. Every little thing is recorded. Then you feel like every moment you feel joyous because you're not waiting for that pat on the back. Because that pat on the back <laughs> ain't going to happen, right? It ain't happening. So when you're just relying on that appreciation from your kids, which may take till they're like 25, right? <laughs> Until that deep appreciation comes when they're married and they have kids. I remember I was potty training my son, my firstborn son, and then I called up my mom and I said, Mom, thank you. I never, th I never thanked you for potty training me and I'm so indebted to you. <laughs> and I just, I never realized the, the struggle you go through. And sometimes you won't be appreciative until you're in that same situation. So this is like, talk about, uh, what is it? Delayed gratification, right? P parenting is all about delayed gratification. You are planting the seed you're doing so much and and you may not see any of it right it's like when you're planting a bamboo tree right i what i've read is that you plant it and for five years you don't see anything you know so imagine plant it, it's like hello <laughs> water in it. and then it suddenly like shoots up like 80 feet like right it shoots up so um, sometimes parenting is like that. You may put so much effort into it. You may like, you know, and you feel like it's just going in one year, out one year. Like I've been saying the same thing every morning, you know, so funny, like with my son, my younger son, you know, as you're eating simultaneously, you can multitask, take a bite and put on your shoes. <laughs> So, you know, we'll repeat this, you know, we're about cleaning your room. Don't leave the house until your bed's made. All these things. And we think, when is it finally going to sink in, right? Now, these are the behavioral things. Then there's those emotional things where you're like, you know, handle things with ease. And then that beautiful moment comes when someone, someone from the outside will comment on your child's behavior. And that's why, like, I love parent-teacher conferences, you know, <laughs> because mashallah, that, if, if you're doing those things, if you're being consistent, finally someone recognizes, oh, wow, like I really, I saw that your, your child was really attentive. Everyone was picking on this kid and it was your, your son who went and became his friend and stood up for him. Yeah, it's those moments where you feel like, okay, finally something, something sank, <laughs> something sank in and they're finally applying what they're doing. Now, so as far as the, um, the disapproving parent, okay, what they feel that emotions make a person very weak. They feel that the emotions are making them weak and children have to be emotionally tough, right? And I remember, um, and you see that actually in coaching, there are different kinds of coaching styles too. I had put my son, when he was about um, four years old, into martial arts. It was in America and it was like the best experience ever. The coach was, can we keep it down a little bit? Thank you, thanks. Um, the coach was so positive, all into positive reinforcement. He would give out sheets and in that sheet, every little thing that my son did would get us, you know, would get stickers and stars. And he had stars across his, you know, chest and across his belt. And he was so motivated to do good. And he, and any form he did, um, the coach was all about like, oh, wow, you're really good. You're really strong. And so he was thriving in that environment. Then we went to the Middle East and I signed him up for soccer <laughs> and it was a totally different approach totally different approach I sat there and I would always sit throughout there you know um, the practices just to observe because I wanted to know I've worked really hard on my kids I don't want someone to undo or do something wrong with 
with them during that hour. So I would see that the coach would just chew out the kid, was like totally telling, hey, I don't know what you're doing. Keep your eye on the ball. What's wrong with it? You know, and I said, oh my God. I looked over to the other moms. I'm like, oh my God, do you see what they're doing? It's like, it's good. It's, it's making them strong, making them a man. And I said, <laughs> I don't want that kind of a man, right? And so I actually pulled them out, although I had paid for the whole year. I pulled them out and I said, I, I don't want my son's self-esteem to be destroyed by this kind of like coaching style. So you see that the same kind, like you know what we're talking about, parenting style, sometimes you see it with coaches. Sometimes you see it with like employers where they might have these kinds of styles. So you can see it in, you know, in so many different areas. And so um, what happens is that with these, with this kind of parenting is that they believe that like negative emotions are unproductive. Like it's a, it's a bad thing and it's, you know, you just got to shut it down. Now, what are the effects? So how many of you now feel that you had disapproving parents? Huh? Do you have? I did not have disapproving parents, but like I grew up in a Bitcoin family system. So in a Bitcoin family system, I like from other parents, like uh, my uncle okay. was disapproving. And he was constantly pointing on to like, you know, other people's kids. How do you, like, you know, how do you deal with that? Okay. Like, the other person in the family. Right. Is, has that so you were in a joint system joint family system and you had other family members who are disapproving it's very tough you know because what happens is that most people are not open and receptive to hearing comments from others even if you're an expert they don't want to hear it right it would be it'll, it'll be so interesting because sometimes I'll be sitting you know I would be sitting amongst uh, moms who are struggling in their you know in their daily things and 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 you know yet it never occurred to them to like you know just ask what would be the most effective thing because each person feels that their problem is unique and they're doing the best they can so that's a little bit challenging maybe we'll address that at the end on how to deal with other people's parenting styles but here's the effect the effect of children it's um, basically the same as the disapproving same thing that people will feel like oh my my feelings are not important they don't feel validated they're going to not be able to handle their own emotions okay now we have also the third parenting style is um is the laissez-faire oh i'm sorry are they people downstairs i'm sorry salam alaikum i didn't realize that people were downstairs because we have the moms up here with the kids